happy Friday. We're back with another five weekly favorites. First up is a candle that we got in Santa Barbara. Sorry, I'm <laughs> Harry's like trying to get up here with his joy. It's so funny. It's so cute. Um, it's by the brand Botanica. This is the Rainier candle. And we actually liked a few of them that we smelled mm -hmm. in store, but this one is so good. I feel like it really hits you with like fresh citrus notes. Yeah, Rainier, I think it's named after Mount Rainier, so yeah. it's supposed to be like mountainous and fresh. Yeah, I feel like it smells like like it smells like springtime. Like some citrus, yeah. some like just like fresh greens. Also like some light florals, not like heavy powdery florals. It's really nice. It's like so they did good. a really, and really good affordable. job. really affordable. Mm -hmm. And it burned pretty well. I feel like maybe they use a soy wax. Yeah, the wax. wax is like a little weird. Yeah, the wax is a little weird, but burned pretty well. One second, I need to help Terry with this toy. Another favorite we've talked about so many times, but I recently rediscovered it, is the Vanna Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser. And I basically ran out of our Cetaphil Cleanser, which is a big bottle. And I have a really tiny bathroom and a small sink. So that was like a good bang for your buck, but I just felt like I wanted something smaller and cheaper because I'm on a budget these days. And this is like the cheapest face wash. How much is it? I think it's like $8. Okay, yeah. And you get eight ounces. But well, the smaller set of fill is also like $9. Oh, so really? They only have it at Walmart that I've seen. Yeah. Um, and it's actually like a little more because it actually does lather and the Cetaphil doesn't. I feel like my forehead's been really oily lately and it has been like helping control those oils. But it doesn't dry out the parts of my face that yeah. are dry. So it is just such a good gentle cleanser. You know Vanna Cream is our favorite skincare brand. Truly. They can do no wrong. It has a really simple ingredient list and it's just really good. And I'm really happy I went with this. Um, I think maybe when it does get colder again, like I'm hoping it just gets warm from here mm -hmm. on out. Sorry if you can hear Terry. Um, but when it gets colder, I do think the Cetaphil is a more gentle, so better for like dry skin. But in the summer months and like the spring, I think this is a perfect cleanser. Another skincare product I have been loving is the Ren Smooth. Is it glass? Yeah. <gasps> Smooth Prep and Plump Essence. I've been using this every single night. Sometimes I'll use it in the morning, but usually my vitamin C serum is like um, hydrating enough that I don't need this in the morning. But I put this on before a moisturizer at night and it is like a really like thick serum. You can definitely hear Terry. It's like a thick serum texture. It actually reminds me a lot of my ampule that I love. I can never say that in brand, but that thick like serum gel texture. That one's actually thicker. This is still an essence, so it's thinner than a serum, but I would say it's one of the thicker essences that I've tried. And the ingredient list is pretty simple. Okay, so one thing I, I pulled up the ingredient list because I want to mention the first four ingredients are water, propendiol, glycerin, and niacinamide, and then phenoxyethanol. And if you're unfamiliar with the Clean Beauty program at Sephora, phenoxyethanol is a preservative. It's allowed in formulations under 1%. So what I'm taking this to mean is that whole, like there are, like sodium hyaluronate is after phenoxyethanol and some other ingredients, but I, those must be under 1%. So I think the basis of this formula is the water, propendiol, glycerin, and niacinamide. So essentially it's just humectants and niacinamide. So I feel like that works really well with my skin because my skin tolerates niacinamide really well. So I think, I'm assuming this is over 1% in the formula. I don't know if it even says. No, it's just un listed under um, their like called out ingredients. And I also love glycerin. I think it's one of my favorite humectants, yeah. if not my favorite one. I like that it adds a little bit of tackiness. I love um, polyglute hammock acids too though yeah i'm really just nice. saying that that's probably at like a lesser percentage yeah not like one of the main actives but i agree with you um but glycerin i think it's my favorite humectant more than um hyaluronic acid because i like that it leaves a little bit of like tackiness on your skin i feel like it helps to adhere products that you put on after it so for that reason i love anything that's glycerin based so my skin just works really well with this. I really love this combination of ingredients. It's like simple, um, there's no fragrance or anything, and it's super, super hydrating. And it is kind of expensive, it's $55. It has Remo put fragrance in like every. Yes, yeah. I feel like if they take fragrance out of that overnight mask, I know, and that's purchasing so it good. immediately. 
um, but I do think it's $55 so it is kind of pricey but you do get 100 ml and I only use this at night so I feel like it would last me so long the purchase after or a period after opening is nine months so you technically should be using it within nine months but overall I think that this is such a good essence it kind of could act as like a hydrating serum if you want something a little bit lighter weight than a serum this is such a random favorite, but I'm still trying to figure out my headaches. I've seen so many doctors, and the immunologist I recently saw to explore allergies said that my nose was inflamed. Um, shout out to the ENT who wouldn't even look at me. I feel like it's it's just teaching me so much about doctors and all of that. But anyways, um, so he said my nose was inflamed and to start using Flonase twice a day, which I had used. Um, like right after I was sick for a while and then I didn't think it was doing much so I stopped. So I started using that again. It's expensive. Flonase is yeah. not cheap. Well, are there off again? brands? No, I don't think mm. so. And I was like, maybe it's helping a little with my nostrils, but like maybe not. Then I saw my functional medicine doctor. She also looked at my nose and said that it looked inflamed. And I had been using Flonase at that point for like two weeks, twice a day, every day. And she's like, yeah, your nose is inflamed. And I'm like, hmm. Flonase doesn't seem to be helping then. And she's like, oh, you should get X-Clear nasal spray. Um, I prefer to Flonase because it's all natural. Flonase is um, steroids and this is like all natural ingredients. And she said that it also is antibacterial and antiviral because of the xylitol, which is like a sugarcane oh. alcohol. But you it don't kills like food. Yeah, but it kills bacteria. So she told me to pick this up. I bought it at Target for like $15, but I saw it was on Amazon for $8, which you guys is like a third of what Flonase costs. Mm -hmm. And when I started to read the reviews, so many people were like, I tried Flonase, I tried prescription things for like various allergy issues, and this was the only thing that works. And I can already tell, I've used this like four days in a row, my nose feels so much more clear. I don't think it's helping with my headaches yet, unfortunately, but I think it's like one piece of the puzzle that I hopefully am tackling with this nasal spray. And I wanted to mention it because if you're sick or um, if you get congested a lot because of allergies, I would skip the Flonase and just get this. And I had never heard of it until she told me to pick it up, but yeah, it's on Amazon and it's at Target, so... Um, I'm always going to use this now. Yeah. I saw a lot of people said that they used it when they went on like cruises or um, if they're traveling via airplane um, just to prevent getting sick because it has those antibacterial properties and if you put it in your nose morning and night it can like clear out bacteria that's this is kind of gross but like gather throughout the day or in the morning that has like gathered at nighttime and prevent you from getting sick for any illnesses you can get, you know, through I your think nose. All illnesses yes, you, you get, get through, through your nose. Yeah. Um, so I love that I discovered this and I will never be without it now and I needed to share. Okay, and then last up is this cream bronzer, the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer in the shade Light. So I had the shade Medium and I raved about it before. I love this formula. It's really thick and pigmented, so a little goes a long way. But I like that when you blend it out, it really stays where you put it. It doesn't, like it takes a lot of blending because it is thick, but it's not something that like migrates everywhere. You know those really emollient cream bronzers that just kind of end up blending on your whole face and you want it in a targeted area? This is not that. But I had the shade medium and it was a little dark for like my winter not tanned skin. So I picked up the shade light and at first I thought this was too light for my skin tone. Like it looked very natural and I like a dark bronzer but layered underneath a powder bronzer I actually think this is perfect. And I really like the yellow undertones that it has. Um, I'll swatch it. Well I'll insert a swatch. It doesn't even look that light though. If yeah, that's the lightest I think one. I was being picky. Yeah mm -hmm. it's not. But it it does look fairly natural if I were to wear this on its own, whereas medium was too dark. So if there was a light medium, that would be my perfect shade. But I do like this for the winter, and I do think it's more forgiving with the medium. I could only do like one dot on each cheek because it was so dark that like when I blended it out, if I put too much, it could look muddy. Whereas this one, I feel like it's more forgiving. You can use more product and blend it out, and it doesn't look muddy or patchy. So if you have like a similar skin tone to me, pick this up. There is a really strong fragrance in it that I do not like, and I don't know why brands put fragrance in bronzers. It will, it's always lost on me. Like, why do you need it in a cream bronzer? I don't understand. That's my only gripe, but super affordable. The best drugstore cream bronzer I've found. Thank you guys so much for watching. This week was a mix of unique things, yeah. but good stuff. So we'll see you next week.